for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. All right, you may be seated. I hope everyone has their book, and I believe it's probably time to reorder books. So we want to be a ever-learning people, so I encourage you to see Sister Tanya so we can get a, you can get your next series of lessons. Amen? Amen. Okay, we're, we're still talking about the church, discipleship and the church, okay? And if you have your uh, manual or your... Uh, book, we're going to just kind of step back so we can go forward. We're going to review the lessons. These have been some great lessons and they're all about the church. What the church, the role and purpose of the church. Does anybody know what the role and the purpose of the church really is? Okay. Brother Samuels? To represent Christ in the earth. To do what, huh? Represent Christ in the earth. Okay. Represent Christ in the earth. Anyone else want to go deeper? That's true. To love and serve. To love and serve. That's good. Okay. Be a hospital. Yeah. Be a hospital where the people it, can come. Yes, and that's, that was one of God and be healed and be made right. whole. That was one of our lessons. The church in the hospital. The church of school. Church at the source of education. All of these lessons are helping us to understand the total, the composite church of the church, all right? Let's let's just look if it's it's here on in our in our manuals. I just wanted to go over this. This is series um, seven. seven. Okay? But anyway, if you will turn to page 46 in your book, we're just gonna review just very briefly what the church is all about. I mean, we can be in the church and be a part of it, but we don't understand its role in the earth today, okay? The church's role in the church today as far as discipleship, how we are to learn, how we are to um, act in the church, and God's provision for the church is a hospital, is a school. Anybody remember those lessons? Oh, we don't remember those was good lessons, good lessons. Okay, and so last time we had a study about the church was the order of God in the church. Who remembers the C verse? Who remembers the C verse? Let all things be done what? So we talked about church order, the role of a bishop, the role of a deacon. We made that all plain, you remember? So we're gonna step a little further today the name of our lesson today is, believe me, it's really about Christian leadership. In service training, and the underlying theme is pre preparation for church leadership. And we just came out of a leadership meeting. So this lesson is gonna teach us how important biblical leadership is in the church. Okay? Preparation for church leadership. Okay, now let us pray. That was our review. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your uh, word that will never fail. The word, Lord, that will last and endure forever. And Holy Spirit, we ask your presence. Open our hearts and open our eyes that we might behold wondrous things out of your word. Father God, I pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Father, touch our hearts. Give us understanding. Lord, and I just thank you. I believe you, Father God, to make an impact, a difference in the lives of your people today concerning church leadership. Father, we know it's vital. We know it's essential. And we know it's important. But Lord, open up our eyes that we can really see unto doing, understanding, Father God, the church and Christian biblical leadership. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Okay? Everybody on one card here this morning? In service training. If you have your book, okay, if you don't have a book, maybe you can look on with somebody. Who has that book? Ooh-wee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
all right, saints, we want to get on books. I mean, this is some serious learning and teaching hour. That's what the Sunday School Hour is all about. So you can learn. Thank you, Sister Kathy. And so we're on page 35. All right, in service training. And our C verse is 2 Timothy 2.15. All right, 2 Timothy 2.15, if you would like to turn to that. All right, and it says, in King James study, to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, that's how, I'm gonna ask you to commit that to memory. I'm gonna ask you to commit that to memory, please. Okay? You know, we got to turn a corner, saints. I'm not going to fuss. But we, <laughs> we're going to turn a corner here in the uh, uh, house of prayer. We have got to get more serious about the study of the word. Not just reading. All right? Studying. Researching. Research. Our sister just became a nurse practitioner. She had put many hours into the study of that a uh, uh, medical field. You have to study. You have to dumb down. Correct, sister? And you got to study. So we want to be a people that study the word. Not just read it, but investigate it. Research it. How, how many of us have ever done a term paper? When you were in college or maybe you did a book report in school, but you had to just dumb down. You had to do some seeking. You had to do some searching. You had to read some books. So you went beyond just what? Reading. Amen. And the word says study, search, research, dig. All right, how many of us at home, how many of us have a dictionary, a, a Webster's dictionary? Yes. You need two things when you begin to study. And you may you know, we'll have more than this. But you need an English dictionary. You need a concordance, all right? Preferably the uh, Strong's Concordance, which has the Greek and the uh, Hebrew uh, interpretation of the words, because that'll give you a little bit more understanding and depth. So we want to study. You need your Bible, you need a dictionary, you need a concordance. Those are the natural things you need. And you need to come to the Lord with an open mind and a, a, and a heartfelt prayer. Lord, help me to understand your word. Because this book, this Bible of the 66 is a library. Guess what? It's not a natural book. And you can't understand it with your mind. Amen. You need the Holy Spirit's help. Okay? All right? So we want to study to show ourselves approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. So I'm sure that when I asked that question, who knew that scripture? You probably felt a little embarrassed because you didn't know it. All right, so when you study, you will begin to uh, memorize scriptures, you'll begin to apply scriptures, and it won't be so, you know, oh, I wonder what they talk about this. Because the Bible is the greatest expositioner of the Bible. The greatest commentary of the Bible is this Bible. And as you read and study, because there are other resources and helps, you will become approved unto God. And then you won't be. You won't be like the, the man in the book of Kings when he was running. He wanted to run, okay, to tell David about the, the outcome of the battle. But he didn't know when he got there to give the report, he didn't know the outcome. So we want to be sharp. We want to be ready. We want to have the word of God in our mouths so we'll know what to do at all times. Amen? Amen. So let's say study. To show yourself what? Approved unto God. Amen. I, I ask you to commit that to memory. So don't start in-house fighting. Who she thinks she is telling me to memorize something. But it's not for me. It's for who? You. Study to show yourself. You know, it kind of amazes me how people can be in church for so long. Years. And they still don't understand the very basic doctrines of Christ, of the Bible, right? So we want to we want to become, we're going to turn a corner. One day we'll have a school here, okay? A Bible school, okay? All right, and we'll offer classes. 
Okay? <laughs> Salvation 101, whatever. We don't have school yet, a Bible school, a training school. So we can be equipped. And you need not be ashamed because, oh well, you know, I've been in church. I had a woman tell me I've been in church 40 years and she thought she was just too good to study. But you never ever come to the truth of God's word where you can't grow and can't expand. Now I'm going to ask you, we kind of, how many minutes? Oh, what's sister, sister, governor? Five or ten minutes? Okay. Okay, I'm going to ask some questions and I need your feedback. Okay? Sister, she's gone. Sister Portia, you got your book? Okay. Okay, Sister Trina, could you read the first paragraph here? We're going to ask you one question here. We're on page 35, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what I thought. Look what the title is. That's yes, in service training. He's got it together. God is in control. Amen. You're a candidate for training. Amen. You sitting here today, you're a candidate for training for Christian leadership. My God. Okay? The cultivating the ground. Level. Cultivating the ground. Okay. Cultivating the ground. Many of us have experienced performance reviews on our job assignment or a debriefing of some sort for our service. If you were to have one day to get ready for a review with God, what would you do to prepare yourself in order right to there. be approved? Okay. If you were to have a review with God and you had one day to prepare yourself, now, when I was working on a job, they would give you a form mm -hmm. and they would tell you, fill out your strengths, fill out these words, or, or underline the words that you think pertain to you. Mm -hmm. They give it to you about maybe a week in advance and then write down your responses. But I'm going to ask you something. If you had one day to prepare to meet the Lord and he's going to examine you, what would you do. Okay. I can't see the face, but tell me who it is. Yeah. Oh, Sister Evelyn, okay. The first thing I do is uh, repent. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, 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 and ask God to help me to get where he wants me to be. Amen. The second thing I would do was surrender everything that I am to him. Uh-huh. With, with my spirit so I can hear him and won't be listening to Somebody that's not of God. Okay. And then the third thing, I would believe what I asked for. Okay. I would believe that God would bless me to come to his throne and be a part of his establishment or his home. Okay. And that's, I, 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 the word of God said, he loves a repentant heart. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing I would do. Get into a repentant state Amen. to honor my father who's in heaven so he can bless me to get where he is. All right. I, I, this uh, journal says write down your responses. And believe it, I have the very same thing. I would repent. I would ask for forgiveness. Okay, and I would pray for his help to help me be what he has called me to be. All right? So we, would, we, if we were called to review and, and, and ask, okay, what have you done with the gift I gave you? How much... Did you, was your heart willing to give? These are some self-searching questions. And we know we learned last uh, lesson that accountability and responsibility go together. So the first step to accountability is what? Self-evaluation, okay? The first step, you might want to write this down. The first step to accountability is self evaluation okay to ask the lord to search your heart okay self-evaluation you got to ask god because you don't know your heart oh yeah you 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 on a pedestal or you know you somebody in your own self maybe you think but what does god think about you we know he loves you we know that what is god pleased with in your life what can you do to make the gift and the calling of God sure. Because the Bible says make your election, your calling and election sure. Right. All right, you gotta know who you are, whose you are, and where you are supposed to be. Right. Okay, what are you supposed to be doing for God? It's, it's more than just bench warming. Mm -hmm. Amen, we all got 
something to do. Every joint supplies. So our Bible teaches us. So if you were called for one, and you had one day preparation, you would be on your face, right? Hopefully. You would be praying, and God would have your full attention. And man, he wouldn't be no part-time something. He would have your full attention if you had one day to prepare. And that this question leads us to a preview of the judgment seat of Christ. Someone read for me 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. And it tells us we all, all must stand where? At the, judgment. The, the judgment seat of Christ where our works will be evaluated. Okay? Let's go. All right. Thank you, Sister Alice. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. Uh-huh. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, mm -hmm. whether it be good or bad. All right. So you got a meeting, amen, with the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ. And he's going to ask you, what did you do with that gift? What did you do with the body of Christ? What did you do for me? How many souls did you win for my glory? Not for his glory, not for my glory. What did you do with the gift that God gave you? Okay? How did you treat it? Were you a good steward of it? Mm -hmm. And so that's one question I wanted to get over today. All right? And, and, and as far as this young man that came, I met him in the parking lot. Matter of fact, he carried my bag for me. And he was telling me that he was, first time I said, uno, that's about the only Spanish words I know. Uno, Juan, all right? And, and I met him out there in the parking lot. So he said, God sent him here. See, God sent him here. He's, he's prepared our hearts, okay? And he's lining us up with his vision, his vision for this house, okay? So what, what are we going to answer that? So what could you do? What have you done in the kingdom of God, in the house of God? What have you done? These are just some probing questions. What have you done? How have you served God in this hour, at this time, or maybe in the past? Someone, what have you done to serve God? Someone tell me. Ooh, all right. Somebody says, what I have done doesn't matter because I'm insignificant. But everyone has value in the kingdom. So what have you done? See, that's why I says, don't be a work, be a work, a work of being not ashamed. See, when we don't do what God tells us to do, here comes guilt on this corner is shame, okay? Because we're, we're not to uh, uh, just take what God gives us for granted. You can't take it for granted. It's a serious thing. What have you done in the kingdom? For God and for his people. What have you done? Okay, I just want one answer because we got run out of time. After Sister uh, Evelyn had her hand up. What have you done? Open my heart to serve. Open my heart to serve. Okay. What did you do specifically? You know you were talking about how God had given you a heart to serve in the kitchen and clean. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Okay. So she's a servant. In the house of God, to keep the house of God clean and tidy. Thank you. All right, so what have you done? You don't, you don't, okay. Mother, this morning we talked about, well, I mentioned that uh, sacrifice pre precedes success mm -hmm. in the dictionary. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this morning the Lord provoked sacrifice, right. you know, in giving, um, sacrifice in giving. So the blessings that he's afforded me. This morning, I was able to share with those who the Lord impressed upon my heart to share with. Okay. Even though it was sacrifice, mm -hmm. it was necessary sacrifice. And um, I believe that <laughs> that it just literally opened the door. The sacrifices I made for the kingdom, mm -hmm. God is literally open up, opening up another door and another realm for okay. what he wants to do in the spirit. Okay. Brother Samuels, uh, what have you done to ask yourself? I mean, we got to put nobody on front street, okay? Well, These are just searching questions. I was at Craig Trapper. And what, this what? guy, I don't know if he was hustling me, he asked me for some money. I gave him my last $10. Okay. I helped him. Okay. So we have giving, we have serving. What do you do? Praying. 
Or you pray it, absolutely. Yeah. That's the best thing you can do for anybody is to pray and intercede for them. And that's for the kingdom. Okay, Sister Amelia. storm right now in my own life I'm still available mm -hmm. for people who still you know see something in me and want prayer or you know advice Hallelujah. you know okay she made herself available so there's just some so searching questions that you could ask somebody I mean you could ask about yourself and some people might have a, a plethora of things to do might have a list from A to Z but what have you done I want, you to, I want you to think about that because God wants every, he's got a use for everybody in the kingdom, okay? You're not just a, a bump on a log. So I want to be uh, correct and want to be on time, all right, so we can go to our next services. So what have you done? Now let me ask you this. Those who have answered, I appreciate it. But some of who haven't answered, do you have any plans? Do you have a vision to serve God? Proverbs 29, 18, I believe, says, without a vision, people perish. All right? And then Matthew tells us how I need to be single. Okay? What's, what, what are you projecting? What's your dream? What's your goal in serving God? What's your dream? What's your goal? What do you want to do? Or do you want to do anything? All right? What? Come on, somebody share. What's your dream? What's your vision Amen. for serving God? I want someone to answer we who we haven't heard from. We have time for one person, Mother. We have one time for one person. What's your dream? Without a dream, you perish. You got to have your eyes single. You got to have a goal. Through hell or high water, I'm going to do this for God. You got to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That's right. Amen. Or else you won't get too much done. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What did Jesus yeah. say? Jesus said, he, Jesus set his face steadfastly toward Jerusalem right. when he was knowing he was going to the cross. Yes, he had a vision. Sister Alice? Yeah, you said one person. I was just raising my hand to answer it because it's 10 o'clock. Oh, okay. My just go ahead and My answer. vision is to be. The Christian woman God called me to be mm -hmm. and to do his will. That's my vision. Okay. All right. So we want to have a vision. If you don't have a vision, you won't go very far. That's good, okay. Without a vision, people perish. And God will make that vision clearer and clearer unto you. It may just start as a, you might think it's a, oh, that's just my mind. All right. But it's not because that's. Something he's placed in you. I share a little bit. Ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to be a teacher. I take my little toys and I talk to them. And I even preached my dog's funeral. <laughs> okay? My dog died. And we had a church service. <laughs> Amen? And something God put in my heart to teach the word. Speak the word, preach the word. So that thing will grow in you as you develop in God. Don't take God for granted, don't take your gift for granted. So we'll go on to next week. All right, remember our, our assignment is to memorize 2 Timothy 2.15, okay? Study the what? Show yourself approved. God bless you and thank you for participating and Thank God for this opportunity that we had to see God's word in action. Sister Trina said she prayed, and God sent this young man here. Amen. 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 So let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you. Thank you Father, we want to be in right fellowship with you. So, Lord, just open up our hearts and minds and help us, Father God, to dwell, delve into the word of God and study to show ourselves approved. I lift up every person under the sound of my voice, those on the internet. Lord, give us a desire to study your word and then, Lord, walk in that which you show us to do, to be obedient and bring forth your kingdom on this earth. Now, Lord, prepare our hearts for the next service. Open our minds, open our thoughts, 
open our understanding that we can receive the engrafted word who's able to save our souls. Father, we love you. We love your word. We love you so much, God. And we thank you for the gifts and the callings and the talents and the graces that you have given us. Help us to use them for your glory and the good and the edification of the body of Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.